So it's almost Christmas time. We're training three new fighters for an event coming up in Gainesville at the Georgia Mountain Center on January 24th. Uh, the three fighters are, we got Rachel Rios, who's 18, she's a black belt under me, she's been with me since uh, she was in second grade, I believe. She's a two-time world karate champion, a state champion, a national karate champion as well. This will be her first time she's ever fought full contact, trying to uh, uh, throw as hard as she can, punches, kicks, and, uh, and I think she's going to be pretty, pretty uh, comfortable in the ring, just like Carolina. Carolina had never fought before, uh, full contact, but she seemed to... Uh, have a uh, good time. She said she was uh, a little disappointed in the fight but loved the training. She wanted the fight to be a little bit harder than what it was. I don't know if she, you should be upset with that or not, but you know, but uh, but that's how she felt. She felt like she wasn't, um, didn't do a good job. She wants to fight again. So, so people stay tuned for uh, Carolina's fight coming up later uh, 2009. But getting back to Rachel, this will be her last opportunity to do something big in the martial arts world before she goes to college, and it just timed out perfect. She's got Christmas holidays. She's already got her, uh, her grades and everything have already turned in for, uh, she's trying to be validatory and salutatory and, you know, right in there. Uh, so those have already been turned in first semester, so she doesn't have to worry about that too much. Um, so she's got from now until the end of January to just focus on the fight and not worry too much about school. I, I'm not worried about Rachel. She's a straight-A student, has been since I've known her, so I think she can um, pull it together. Our second fighter is Broadus Blackwell. Broadus Blackwell actually started karate a year before Ryan Peace did. So I've had Broadus since, um, since 1995 and off and on. He, uh, he kind of left karate for a couple of years, came back stronger than ever taught classes for me, still teaches classes, does private lessons, and uh, fought for me full contact fight a few years ago, won, and recently had uh, a son, he and his fiance, and took time off training, and, um, and they've got the situation under control to where he said he wants to train hard for six to uh, eight weeks and do another kickboxing fight. So Broadus Black will be fighting a Muay Thai, Thai boxing fight, and I'll sh show you more uh, about Thai boxing, Muay Thai boxing later on uh, in this episode or future episodes, uh, just to explain the rules. So we've got Rachel, Broadus, and our last fighter is Ryan. Ryan's going to fight again January 24th. This will not be a title defense. He won his title in the light, uh, lightweight division. He's a Southeastern United States champion at the 155 pounds in mixed martial arts. Mixed obviously means a combination of styles, boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. Well, this fight is going to be just Muay Thai boxing, which is punches, kicks, knees to the body, kicks to the legs, and, and throws, but no ground fighting. I was kind of happy that he wanted to do that instead of mixed martial arts because, like he said, uh, he's going to have shoulder surgery. So I, a lot of wrestling moves, you put your shoulders in weird positions and, and uh, things, and I, it puts your shoulder at risk. And so I was glad that he just wanted to do a, a kickboxing fight because we can kind of tailor make a fighting uh, style just for him, the training around the, um, his shoulder, so it's not going to be a factor during this fight. Uh, we also had uh, very big, exciting news. We had Ryan's first monetary sponsor. Uh, that means that uh, Ryan, as an amateur fighter, can have uh, sponsors monetary or uh, anything, training, uh, things we need like gloves, pads, or anything like that he needs for training. So his first monetary sponsor was Northeast Georgia Pools, which makes training here a lot better. He can, uh, he's got new shorts, he's got new gloves, he's got uh, new ankle braces, all those things that fighters need to help train. So if it wasn't for them, uh, he's a broke college student. So they kind of helped him out so he can come to class uh, and do that. He's also bought uh, some more of his Ryan Peace t-shirts so he can sell those at the event and here at the karate school. So uh, a big thank you to Northeast Georgia Pools, uh, especially James Williams. So uh, we really appreciate that because it helps you viewers see Ryan train in different clothes <laughs> and also different gloves. So it kind of keeps it a little bit interesting and he can afford to train now and focus on what he's got to do, gas and so forth and whatnot. Cause during college, he lives in Anderson, so he's got to commute. All right, um, I'm back for my 10th fight. Um, my 10th fight will be a Muay Thai fight. It will not be a title defense. Uh, I uh, got to have surgery on my shoulder soon, um, so I wanted to wait till after surgery to, you know, to do a title defense. So I figured, you know, while I'm waiting to get the surgery done, I'd go ahead and get a kickboxing fight of the way. I mean, I love, I mean, my favorite style of fighting right now is to stand up. I mean, I love kickboxing, so. Uh, the style of fighting will be Muay Thai. For people who know what Muay Thai is, it's just, you know, a form of kickboxing. I believe Chuck's going to go over that. 
Um, uh, for my next fight, I'll be fighting a southpaw. Uh, what southpaw means is they have a, a right leg forward, which means their dominant hand is left, left-handed. And uh, you know, for me and, and mostly other people are, are right-handed, so they would fight with their left leg forward, strong hand behind them. So right, right hand would be behind them. So I'm fighting a southpaw. You know, it kind of mixes up. It's kind of a lot different, you know, because you got if, you, if if I'm left leg forward and most other people are left leg forward, then you know I'm used to fighting someone with their left leg forward. You know, now I have to uh, start training different because the, this guy's got right leg forward, and it's just take. There's all kind of different techniques you got to throw in uh, when you got a person with a different leg forward. It completely changes the fight. Um, uh, the guy I'm fighting comes from a very, very reputable gym, uh, one of the more popular gyms in Georgia that really sends out, I mean, pretty much every fighter this gym sends out, a very quality opponent, very quality opponent. Um, you know, I mean, not to say the other, um, other guys I fought, you know, weren't quality opponents, but, but this gym, you know, you're guaranteed you're going to have a tough fight. The guy's going to be in shape. The guy's going to know what he's doing. He's going to have good technique. So I really enjoy, you know, fighting someone who's really technically good, you know, I'd, I mean, it just makes for a very pretty fight and a good fight for the fans. So, uh, with, with Rachel fighting, um, as most of you probably know, me and Rachel's been in a very serious relationship for a long time. So, you, you know, with her fighting, I, I see it. You know, it's almost as, as if I'm fighting. Uh, so now I got to go through my fight in my head. I got to understand what I got to do. You know, and then I also have to go through her fight. You know, I have to understand what she's going to have to do because this is her first time. You know, so she's she's looking to me and especially Chuck. You know, to give her the right advice and lead her. You know, on her way to her first victory. So, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely tough, um, but I mean, I enjoy it. You know, I'm excited. I'm really excited for her. Nervous, and I probably, I'll be more nervous for her than for myself uh, come fight night. So, um, um, I'd like to thank my first, first ever sponsor. Uh, first sponsor is Northeast Georgia Pools. I uh, really like to thank them, especially James Williams. Um, you know, these guys uh, helped me buy a lot of equipment, equipment that I needed, you know. My, my boxing gloves were getting old. I had a pair getting old, and another pair was too small. So I, I, I've been waiting to buy, you know, a size that fits me. I've been, I've gained a little weight, so I need the bigger size and just a new pair, you know, from the ones that are tearing. So uh, and, and also, you can never have too many workout shorts because if you got the same ones, you have to go back and wash them every day because you're working out every single day. So uh, big thanks to them. I, I really appreciate it, you know. And and, and like, uh, you know, and I mean, now I can just really focus on on, on just the training. I ain't got to worry about, you know. Yeah, you know, these gloves are getting bad, you know, and it, and it just, it really helps out a lot. All right, my name is Broadus Blackwell. I've been with Contemporary Martial Arts since 1995. This is my second kickboxing fight, and it, and it will be Muay Thai rule. The Muay Thai rules are I can throw knees, no elbows, low kicks, uh, kicks to the head, and all boxing. The training for this fight and my first fight, this time is more intense than the first one because we really didn't get the science of uh, training down for my first fight. In my first fight, I did win, but I really got gassed because of the conditioning in, uh, in that first training. This time, there's more conditioning, more cardio workouts, and I've been training seven days a week, nonstop. Uh, as of right now, I weigh 175. I have to get to 155. I diet, I eat lean, lean uh, cuisines, lean pockets, and I, I got to eat real, real light to get that, that weight way down. I got a long road ahead of me. So, and um, I drank one gallon of water every day. And, uh, and I hope to sweat that out so that I get that weight down faster. All right. I just had a son. He's three months old now. And it's very hard to have to leave the house to train for several hours. But I, I found a way to work it in. And uh, hopefully, when he gets older and he sees me training as hard as I do, he'll, he'll look up to that and want to push hard at everything he does. So I, I use the training to hopefully one day show him that me working hard gets, gets you somewhere in life. This time training, me and Ryan are fighting opponents that pretty much match up the way we stand. I stand with my right leg forward and Ryan stands with his left leg forward and vice versa with our opponents. So uh, my guy stands left leg forward and I really love the idea of training with Ryan because he, he not only works harder than anyone else I've ever really sparred with, uh, he, he, he makes me push myself as well. So fighting with someone I know that's up there with me or above me, it's, it's, it's better for me because I, I can get a better training in versus just fighting someone that will somewhat push me. So. It's pretty good that I'm training with someone that's fighting the same way my opponent's fighting. 
so I can get used to what where I can throw my leg kicks and how I can get to his head faster. And um, I think that worked out pretty well for both of us. The guy I'm fighting is from the same exact school Ryan's guy, uh, Ryan guy is. Um, he's had four more fights than I have. And uh, other people that would probably worry them, but I see worrying about a, a fight would probably bring you down to uh, stand concentrated in the fight. And uh, I, I, I look at it as in, he's a human being, we, can, we both fight, and whoever is the better man will win. The gym I'm fighting against, uh, the guys are very good fighters. I mean, it, 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 other people from other schools are very afraid to go against these guys. I kind of see it that we're, our school is the only school that can probably stand up to them. The good thing about that is we got such good fighters that preparing for the fight isn't as hard as thinking about the fighters that you'll be fighting against. The guys are real good, but I think training with Ryan, Andrew, and all the other guys, guys and girls that's fighting will help me overcome that that uh, worry about fighting the the better guy or um, the better gym. The better gym. Full body, go ahead and make it five stars, add one more off the body to it. Oh, yeah, that's what you got going for. Well, I'm saying, as far as weight, so push-ups, you know, maybe, maybe a few more push-ups. We had so much legs, you know. Well, I tell you, and, and once I tell you this, you'll probably know why, but I agree, we need more off the body. Well, not, not overall, just for this workout. Yeah, but but you know, you know why I do, let, let's say if you watch day one all the way to the last workout, it's about 70% legs in lower body. My workout, all right? Yeah. And the reason why is because without legs, you can't have strength in your punches. Right. Without legs, you're going to uh, get knocked down a lot easier. You know, your movement's going to be bad. You're going to get hit more. Your kicks are going to suck. So that's why I'm a little more leg-oriented during all my workouts overall. 
even though some days may be strictly upper body, if you average it out, yeah. and just three men without legs and your whole body, you're not going to power punch, you're power kicks, and you're going to fall down a lot more. So that's why I'm more, you know, that's my philosophy. I haven't taken that philosophy from anybody. That's just the way I look. Yeah. And that could be the reason why your legs and things are. Standard boxing stance, all right. 
But you guys, what I'm teaching you, modify for your art, okay? So, okay, get in your stance. All right. When, in, in boxing, um, you're going to be evenly distributed over your feet, and your feet are flat. And you can see a lot of MMA guys now are throwing kicks from flat-footed stance. Again, you guys got to modify this the way you want. To get power in boxing, you don't get power with your punches up here. Okay? So, get your hands up. Okay. With, with, with your jab, the jab, let's start out with the jab, and then we'll go through uh, the three basic punches, jab, right hand, left hook, and then we'll start, we'll use a left hook, we'll use a jab, left hook combination. But with the jab, you don't jab, in boxing, you don't jab from here. Now, boxers do have, have the most powerful punches. That's been shown numerous times. The shoulder is down, and you're relaxed. See the position I am? Hands are quarter turned into your face. They're not like this. And this is more of a peekaboo stance. Tyson, for effective hitting, it's very acceptable, too. But basically, you just bring your hands up. And stand up and do it. Stand, stand up and do it. <clears throat> just take your hands up like you're curling a weight. Six inches off your face. Get a reason you don't have them on your face. Peekaboo. And now, as tight as you can. And try to stop the... See how I control the head? Okay. Now, if he's out here, it's a lot better, isn't it? Put it against your face. Try, try to stop it. Try to stop it. See, I mean, you follow what I'm saying? Just so you get an idea. Get your hands up so you understand. Put it against your hair, forehead. Okay, now try to stop me. Just keep it there. Watch. Got it? It resists, see? Okay. See what I'm saying? Now, out here. Okay, now, see? See the difference? See the difference? So you want to be six inches off your face for blocking. Now, I think in all, all of martial arts, uh, the peekable crap, you see a lot of fighters do this kind of thing. <clears throat> and again, you're going to be able to control the head by hitting the hands. Out here, you got more more ability to block. All right? Okay. With the jab, the jab comes from the deltoid, from the shoulder. It's not something you just throw like this, using the trap, using, using the, uh, you know, just extend, you know, just doing this kind of thing. Uh, I'll do it this way. You start the jab from here. Let me get a pad. You can hold it. Do it this way first. Okay. Oh. Okay. When I come in, then this, and if you want to watch a good jabber, believe it or not, you want to study people, study Mike Tyson. <laughs> he was an excellent jabber, believe it or not. Okay. It comes from the shoulder, your hand is relaxed, and you're moving with the jab. If I don't move with the jab, if there's my opponent's chin, I'm here, okay, I'm not going to get him. So, especially if you're a shorter fighter, then this is how short fighters can move in. They move in with two, three jabs. Close the distance. Again, a guy like Tyson is 5'10", 5'10 and a half, fighting guy 6'8", you know, you're not going to reach a guy. You're going to double your jab in. Okay, when it comes from the shoulder, the hand is relaxed. It's, it's relaxed and loose. Get in your stance and try it. Your hand is relaxed, quarter turn, okay? When you step, and you, I can't do it, so you step, bring it out. At the end, it comes over, and you close. I'll do it a little faster. Okay? It comes. See where I am? Now, the key point here to save the elbow from damage is that your hands are relaxed. If you're tight, before, if you're tight through the whole punch, you're, if you're gonna be fighting yourself. You're not gonna get any power. The key is at the end of the punch, when the elbow gets about there. The hand comes over, and you squeeze, okay? This is why shadow boxing is very important, because you want to be able to throw as hard as you can, <laughs> as hard as you can, and not hurt your elbow. So when I come out, I lock and it snaps. Also, the theory and the idea, as you well know, but it's good for review, is to jar the head so violently that the brain bounces inside the skull and the guy passes out. Now, if I hit him and I push him, it doesn't do it. I want to jar the head so at the end, that snap at the end is the key. So watch the hand. He goes here. I come in. 
You see the pad snap? Okay. If, if I push it hard and I end up like that, I'm not going to get as much power. So it comes over at the end. Same thing with the right hand. You'll see a lot of punchers end up like this. All right. Same with the right hand. It comes here, 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 and I'll demonstrate that more, but just give you a little review right now. And you snap at the end. Okay. So it's, <coughs> follow me? So I'm here, here, and you see how I'm pivoting perfectly straight up and down. Hand comes over, lock. Again, if you want to watch good punchers, watch the old timers, not really old timers. Uh, there aren't good boxers nowadays, the modern day boxers. Uh, boxing, even pro boxing has gone downhill so badly because the amateur programs are crummy so you have no more good pros. Go back to Hearns and Leonard, you know, Duran, on all the way back to Robinson, Joe Lewis, Tyson, all these guys, they all punch the same, they all punch the same way, okay? So again, the idea again is, is that if I miss a man, <laughs> I miss him, I don't hurt myself. See where my arm is? So you gotta time the squeeze, <laughs> time it, <laughs> okay? Try it now. Get over to Ryan and just go back to some tip. Try two jabs, move in with the jabs. Two jabs, jab, jab, plant, that's it. Okay? Relax, relax, relax. Yeah, yeah, bang. 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 Bang.